How Israel has slammed a hearing brought forth by South Africa at the International Court of Justice calling for the withdrawal of troops from Gaza. Responding to the case at The Hague, Israel's representative says it makes a mockery of the heinous charge of genocide. South Africa presents the court yet again for the first time within the scope of less than five months with a picture that is completely divorced from the facts and circumstances. Israel is engaged in a difficult and tragic armed conflict. South Africa ignores this factual context, which is essential in order to comprehend the situation. South Africa is asking the World Court to order an immediate halt to the Israeli offensive in Rafah as part of a wider case filed in December accusing Israel of committing, committing genocide in the enclave. We've put enough evidence before the court on the genocidal intent coming from Israeli leaders, so we are not making a mockery of the Genocide Convention. Nobody is exempt from international law. There's no special exemption for any state from any provision in international law. The, the Genocide Convention does not exempt the Israeli state from genocidal actions. Earlier this year, the ICJ passed a ruling demanding that Israel take action to limit deaths arising from its military offensive. But judges stopped short then of ordering a ceasefire. And for more details, Alex Cardia joins us from The Hague in the Netherlands. Alex, strong words there from Israel. What more did they have to say at this hearing? Yeah, very strong defense mounted by the Israeli legal team uh, who rushed here. They were given four days notice that these uh, hearings would be oral hearings. They had previously thought they would have a written submission. Now, that uh, was one of the arguments placed put by Israel, but also accusing uh, South Africa of using erroneous information to build their case, saying they were relying heavily on information from Hamas, which could not be relied on and certainly was not worthy of the International Court of Justice, saying uh, a, foreign affair, a foreign ministry spokesperson from Israel saying that it is the world upside down that Israel is being accused of genocide when the atrocities of October 7th meant that it has a right to defend itself and therefore pursue Hamas in Tarafa because that is the crucial question uh, uh, that is uh, before the court today. South Africa asking the International Court of Justice to order Israel to stop all military operations in Rafah and allow for the access and the free flow of humanitarian aid as well as all UN agencies including UNRWA, journalists and other international observers. Now pushback from Israel, making it very clear uh, that they do not uh, see Israel's military uh, in breach of the Genocide Convention, but clearly tense scenes in that courtroom. In fact, just at the end of Israel's defense, when the lawyers were wrapping up, a protester in the court shouted liars at the Israeli legal team before being very quickly ushered out. So some tense scenes. We had some protesters uh, just outside of the courtroom, some pro-Israeli protesters as well. Clearly, uh, if nothing else, this shows that international pressure on Israel and Israeli forces' behavior is mounting. All right, Israel has had its chance to refute the charges. Uh, what will happen next? When will we expect to get a verdict from this court? Well, there's a couple of things to look at. Just at the end of the Israeli uh, presentation today, one of the judges asked the lawyers to provide more information on the humanitarian conditions in uh, some parts of Gaza near Rafah, the parts where civilians are expected uh, to evacuate to whilst the operation in Rafah is ongoing. That will be a linchpin question. The Israelis have 24 hours to respond because the big question in front of the court as well is whether or not the operation in Rafah uh, uh, creates an environment in which human life cannot be sustained. That is the argument by South Africa and that is what the court needs to decide. We expect a response from them around the middle of next week if they rule against Israel and orders Israel to stop its military operation in Rafah, that is legally binding. But legally binding orders of that International Court of Justice behind me have been ignored in the past. The court has ordered Russia to stop its invasion of Ukraine, which, of course, did not happen. Enforcement of these orders is down to the UN Security Council. So that yet again, Israel's relationship with the Biden administration then becomes crucial because the United States could veto any and all enforcement action. However, the Biden administration has been quite harshly critical of the operation in Rafa. So at uh, these next few weeks and this case and this provisional order requested by South Africa could be a game changer in the next few weeks.
Oh, thanks, Alex Cardio reporting live from The Hague.